Christ. That looks good. Okay. Okay. Do you have your first notes? Is that recording? <clears throat> Fuck yeah, it is. So, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so, <laughs> so. Okay, put on that TV voice. Welcome back to Seek of Strength. So, we're back with another long form video again, like we did with the Korean training vlog. You guys seem to really like that, and that's kind of like Dara said in that one. Our uh, bread is buttered on both yeah. sides like that originally. Yeah. And uh, I think we're going to, we said we'd do some more in that format. And this Balco. Yeah, the four people who watched it really enjoyed it. You know what I said? Hang on a second. Better find the proper name of that, the Balco thing. People will probably know, but it's called like Untold. The Bay Area Lab Cooperative. No, the Netflix documentary oh. is called the. Oh, uh, yeah, it is Untold. It's in that series. Yeah, isn't this Untold something? Oh, is that a series? I think Untold is a series, yeah. So they come out separately, but they're all the same. Netflix. Netflix. Hall, untold Hall of Shame. Hall of Shame. So it's an American football with a needle stuck into it. So overblown. So it's basically Victor Conte, Balco. What does Balco stand for? Pop quiz. Bay Area Lab Cooperative. Well, you watched it today. It's actually so Laboratory mean. Cooperative. Laboratory. Dexter's Laboratory. Yeah. So basically there's a documentary interviewing Victor Conte, Tim Montgomery, most people did want to be interviewed on it. Uh, Jeff Anders. the Rat Nowitzki. Jeff the fucking Rat <laughs> Nowitzki. That f oh. oh, it makes me sick. He's what Conor McGregor would call a rat bastard. Yeah, rat bastard. Yeah, rat bastard. Yeah, yeah. do nothing. Yeah, and Jeff, he did the, rat, do nothing Jeff the Rat Nowitzki. By the way, it. he loved it. If you haven't watched it yet, yeah. watch it before you listen to this because basically this is an entire <laughs> spoiler. Everything we say in this will reveal what happens in the thing. No, listen to this. Don't click off the video. You'll upset YouTube, the algorithm. Oh, yeah, actually. Watch this and then watch back the other thing. And then like, come back. Dad, right. He is a rat. Then come back and watch this. Yeah. It's uh, it's a very entertaining documentary. Yes. I'd worn thin with the documentaries on Netflix, to be honest. A lot of them are. Oh, done. yeah. I'm a documentary fiend. And sometimes I just can't get through the Netflix ones. There's a lot of sports ones on Netflix where it's been a tough time. Yeah. I haven't finished them. Lads. Come on. Do you remember the you true crime? You spent all the money again. What was uh, Stephen Avery? Making a murderer. Avery. Stephen Avery. Minnesota. Jeez, that's such a sad story. Go on. That's a throwback as well. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, so this is about Victor Cante and Balco. We'll stick to, the, stick to this fucking video here. Yeah. So basically, it goes through the whole story and talks to most people. Talks through Victor's kind of how he got set up. Talks through... The athletes he worked with or didn't work with includes Barry Bonds, who everyone knows the name. Everyone associates mm -hmm. Barry Bonds with steroids. It goes through the American Congress. They had to go to Congress. Yeah. America, come on the fuck. Like. No, people need to really get a grip of themselves. Then goes into yeah. his getting convicted. Yeah. And then it basically finishes kind of at the end with him... Victor Conte crying, which I assume are crocodile tears. Yeah. And then, uh, oh, there's, we've got a lot no, of, let's just work away to you know it's because okay. we're, we're going to, yeah. yeah. Let, we'll start off with the stats. So, the stats. Are we on the second post of note? No, no, this thing? is the first post of note. Okay. So basically it starts off with going through what the athletes were given. A very high level of yeah. view, but we got some yeah. cool shots of the voils. Yeah. Which, uh, which, a lot of that stuff was just stock footage because when you see some of the stuff that's written on the vials, you're like, oh, this is taken with a HD camera. And then you see some of the grainy stuff. That really annoys me in documentaries. Where did they get those vials, though? Did you give them to them? No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that really annoys me in sports documentaries, Sorry. you know? Yeah. <laughs> Check the box. Check the box. Uh, in sports documentaries, when they're... Clearly, there's like stock footage pumped in, mm -hmm. or I it's love like, it. do you love it? I'm Does on it? HD EPO and human growth hormone files. No, I love it when it's like the old grainy footage and they're rooting through a little box. Yeah, I like Which, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it kind of pulls me out of the moment, to be honest. Yeah, when you're because I'm like, there's yourself. no way he's using a 21 gauge syringe for that. Yeah, but it's like a show, don't tell. It's like yes, a, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. a demonstration yeah. of uh, of what's going on. And they go through some of the stats where they talk about Tim Montgomery's weight gain. So yeah. he went from, he basically gained like 14 kilos of muscle. Yeah. It was pretty much muscles. Uh, they talk to Barry Bonds stuff, right? Yeah. So the Barry Bonds thing to me, I was only peripherally aware of what exactly happened. Okay. 
I knew he'd been to Congress to go through some of his stats. Yeah. Where they're talking about he gained like 25 kilos or something in the off season or 25 pounds in the, uh, some off seasons, uh, season after season. Yeah. He had 476 home runs. Yeah. Wouldn't induct him into the Hall of Fame. And weirdly, that, the thing of like winning the home run world record or American record, because I, mean, I hate when they call it world record yeah. when it's just America and Japan. 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 And South Korea. Um, when he won that record, he was basically done. Like his, he had had a great career, mm-hmm. but he wasn't like the best baseball player ever. Sock a few dingers. <laughs> it's <just> like, <laughs> had some fucking dingers. And then he just slugged some dingers. Oh, but did you see him hitting those? Yeah. Oh. Any county team would have him pulling 45. The size of his arse. Yeah, he was ne- fucking Just yoked. Thick. I did really like those stats, you know. And yeah. one of the stats which... You do love it. I love it. Oh, those off-season stats they're gaining, I love it. I know. So they're going into Tim Montgomery, and he gained, like I think it was like 14 kilos, basically. Where, Tim kilos. was called Tiny Tim. And he hated it, he said. Yeah, of course he did. So Tim started working with... Uh, Victor Conte Balco yeah. and he was saying he was running a sub 10 seconds so he's running 9 nine six hundred meters uh, yeah. natty before he took anything which we'll admit is possible yeah this this is the first major full stop roadblock for me mm-hmm. is all of these people were like oh no me or my coach or somebody approached Victor Conte and I was already a professional athlete and then I wanted to start getting blood tests from him. Mm-hmm. When everybody knows he's the drug doctor. Mm-hmm. Like, every thrower is working with him. Everybody knows he's the man you go to. Then they're like, no, I wanted to get my zinc checked. Yeah, my copper deficiency yeah. felt low. And then, that's the first time he took drugs? Yeah. Are you joking me? Yeah. Are you saying Barry Bonds went to him saying, oh, no, he forced drugs upon me? Or, like... Uh, any of the world record holders in track and field went to him being like, oh, I never took drugs before, even though we are already the best in the world. And then he forced it upon you. Uh, Marion Jones had to give back four of her Olympic yeah. medals, which was uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, so there's... But like Marion yeah. Jones said, never took drugs before her. Mm-hmm. And just so you know, Marion Jones isn't in the documentary because she said she never took drugs from Victor Conte. But Victor Conte used to give the drugs to Marion Jones's coach, who Same. was also Tiny Tim's coach. Same as Barry Bonds, so he gave them to Barry Bonds's coach, so he never directly, he says, gave yeah. drugs to Barry Bonds. And that coach is the person who actually gave a syringe of the clear to USADA. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. We'll get to Jeff Ratnovinsky. Yeah. But uh, there's kind of two things there that I think it brings up with the whole documentary is that it sets it up or it just turned out that way that everybody's fucking bullshitting throughout the whole thing you can't yeah. trust a word basically anybody's saying the amount of like contradictions I'll give you a great one there's Tim Montgomery right and he's talking about in the end and all the stuff has transpired and he's talking now on the couch and he's talking about running track with his kids and he was like stare is all he gets you it was a bad time and they ruined my life then it cut some 10 minutes later in the documentary, standing on the clock with the 979 time, which was a world record at the time, being like, they can never take that away from me. So which fucking is it? Did it ruin your life? Or was it one of the best moments of your life? But it's just full of that kind of like holier than thou. Mm-hmm. Like, oh yeah, I was really, I'm really sad about what I did. Victor Conte is the same way. Victor Conte is crying at the end of the documentary. Literally crying. Saying that he... He had an impact on his kids' lives because he had to go to jail for a few weeks. No, no, he went to prison camp. Prison camp for a few weeks. Um, which which in itself, we'll talk about it, the overblowing of, of sports, basically, but in itself is outrageous. Um, but he talks, he's like crying, saying, oh, I influenced my kids' lives and they didn't feel safe. And then I realised I influenced all the athletes' kids' lives because their kids had to go to school and whatever. Not a few minutes earlier, he had been talking about the glory of everything. And yep. like how he was the smartest, that he was the best person, nobody was doing what he was doing. Like, I get it, you have to look remorseful. You have to look like, oh, cheating in sports is a terrible thing. But don't make it seem like it's the best thing in the world. Or don't admit that you think it's the best thing in the world mm-hmm. in the same interview. Which you know is going to be in the same documentary. Well, they actually in the documentary called on Victor Conte on this because after he got caught he started working with WADA and telling everyone and was on like interviews and stuff he starts talking about 
how you could catch the dopers and everyone's like Victor Conte's two faced and there's a clip of Dana White going off on him and saying that uh, he's like you know he's a two faced fucking whatever basically and uh, the whole thing is it's kind of actually I think one of the more entertaining parts of the documentary to be fair like at that point when Dana White's going off at a press conference Mm -hmm. someone's just asked him what do you think about Victor Conte most people in the UFC are in gear then yeah like that's glory days UFC time like that's like uh like all of the massive names you'd think of who had TRT scripts and stuff and were just taking whatever they wanted Mm mm-hmm which that's kind of changed now. It has to be a lot less because of Jeff the Rat Nowinski. Don't even start. So yeah, they kind of talk about the <clears throat> Victor Conte turning sides, and uh, Victor Conte basically come out on top and the the end of it. Absolutely. Like we we had a video a few months back about the letter Victor Conte wrote to Ukada about how um, it wasn't Dwayne Chamberlain, was it? about how a UK sprinter had beat the drug test. Yeah, it was. Do you remember that? It a, like was, yeah. a very detailed letter about duck and dive techniques, about uh, skewing the TD ratio by using epitestosterone cream. Like, he has come out on top. Mm-hmm. Yet, there's 15 to 20 more of him alive right now. So there's... Uh on that thing where they're talking about blood tests as well, as I thought was very interesting, you know, he he started out doing in the 80s. You've got to hand it to Victor. He's not a dumbass. No. He might be, uh, Tim Montgomery calls him a hustler and you can never take the hustler out of a hustler or the hustle out of a hustler. Uh, Other people would have other names for Victor, but yeah, he was ahead of the curve, like testing micronutrients and taking particular supplements to improve things, you know, and uh, doing the blood test for athletes in the 80s. And yeah, uh, that's one of the big things where they're talking about the lies is that uh, the athletes are like I thought he was a doctor and Victor's like I never said I was a doctor but he's in a lab testing <laughs> people your blood <laughs> taking your blood giving you drugs uh, giving you supplements and uh, they're he's like I never said I was a doctor and all the athletes are like and I thought Victor was a doctor yeah yeah I think I think both sides are to blame there as if yeah. the athletes didn't know what was happening as if you cared if he was yeah. a doctor or not because he was giving you the clear yeah. But so that's the thing. He's like, as far as I remember hearing an interview with him years, probably 10 years ago at this point, he talked about just basically getting given that machine or he mm. got the machine for some really cheap price, a mass spec, which you don't just pick up off the street. Fuck no. Started doing like dietary tests with people. Sorry. Actually, I worked in a lab where we did buy a LCMS machine off eBay. No. It was quarter of a million, but it was a female. It ah. did work. It worked. It worked. No way. Yeah, like the... Um, so the thing with a lot of science equipment is that most will go for decades. It's like cars yeah. and stuff, you know, yeah. and if you're able to maintain it and if you don't need it for like, uh, let's say, FDA, reg, GMP kind of work. Yeah. Uh, if you just want it for a research lab or something uh, and stuff that's not like medicine quality stuff, they'll do perfect results, you know, and... You can you might not be able to stand over the results in some cases, but if you're doing it for work like that, the mm-hmm. results are accurate, you know. And if you can show it's accurate to yourself, it's good enough, you know. And uh, a lot of those equipments will still retain a shitload of money. Yes. Uh, from the prices, you know, like in a couple hundred grand for those is uh, a reasonable deal. Like a hundred grand for a, an LCMS machine there or a, uh, a HPLC machine or something. Yeah. Yeah. You're, bargain. It's a, it's like buying a Nissan Micro for five hundred euro. Like. Yeah. 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 Um, but he's like he developed ZMA, which we've talked about ZMA hundreds of times on the channel. Mm-hmm. He he's clearly understands what's going on, you know. And mm-hmm. um, he came across the chemist who developed the clear, and like obviously the Patrick guy Patrick Arnold. Patrick Arnold, obviously that guy is some different level of genius. He acted out his mind as well. Yeah, of course he is. He's making designer steroids in his in his shed, mm-hmm. and like he, you'll you'll have watched a documentary, or you might have. He basically took birth control pills, bubbled hydrogen through them, mm-hmm. and made one of the most potent non detectable anabolics ever made. Mm-hmm. Like, that's genius level. I don't think Victor Conte is there. I think Victor Conte is an intelligent person, but it's probably not at that point of analytical or synthetic chemistry oh god no there's very no. few people alive who are like that yeah. really few and from the people we've talked to who are trying to do these things so there's very few people yeah. and chasing those people down is very difficult 
uh, those synthetic chemists or analytical chemists who are willing to do these things, you know. But what I'd call Victor Conte is a shrewd operator. Yeah. That's kind of someone, he's, uh, if you're in the west of Ireland, you call him a cute whore. Yeah. He, he might not be smart enough to develop the clear, but he's fucking smart enough to use it in the right places 100%. of people. Basically, it sounds like Patrick Arnold just gave him a bucket of the clear, is what he was quoted as saying one time. Yeah. And then, uh, like, they went through the stuff where they were using epitestosterone cream to stop your TT ratios going out of whack. And I think everyone's heard of the TT ratio yeah. thing at this stage, where if you take uh, most anabolics, will, unless they're specifically designed for it, will throw your testosterone to epitestosterone ratio to whack, and uh, WADA will look for that in your blood or urine tests. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, I like Victor Conte is no doll. Like he's not an idiot. Absolutely not. And I think that's. I think it's a bit disingenuous when like Jeff the Rat and stuff are talking about him, or Tiny Tim is talking about him, where like oh, he just kind of like swilled people in. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's pretty disingenuous. Like there, I think Victor, and he says people are like sports should be a level playing field and Victor Conte is saying and the thing is like sport is a level playing it's just not the one you yeah, think of 100% and I think he's probably the first non-state actor to get involved in this whole thing so this was like the early 2000s nine, late 90s where he's doing his bits you know yeah. and he kind of I think he's one of the first people who kind of I don't know how he really figured it out that this was what was going on uh, but it is very interesting that he was kind of one of the first people so obviously there's people who work with athletes all the time who know Russia, the USSR, you know, European, China, China all this, Eastern USA. Yeah. Like there's, yeah, all, yeah. there's all these people who know what's going on. But he was kind of the first person to kind of, it seemed like, me independent person to get involved in this, or at yeah. least first person who's gotten caught from it. And I think the most important thing that's not talked about at all, really, is that he was able to do comprehensive performance enhancing drug tests mm -hmm. or get those tests done in California somewhere in his lab he did them in his lab was that he used to do those so like that's a massive thing that's not brought up is like that is the most important tool if you want to beat drug tests mm -hmm. is you have to be able to do drug tests there's or get the drug test done yeah there's a few people around who can do that for you um, yeah if you go looking for them you know and uh, it's quite interesting uh, but it's they found so that's one of the reasons with the Barry Bonds thing is that there is you can see the sample number yeah of a urine test that had D ball metabolites and nandrol metabolites and if you reference that sample number to whose sample it was it was Barry Bonds you know yeah but it, it, he was never connected or whatever but everyone knows basically and Victor Conte won't say that it was him or whatever you know because he's keeping the charade up or same with Marion Jones I think yeah so Marion Jones got six months for perjury in court six months in prison yeah which is fucked up and that brings us on to they're just running like the other big massive deal and this is the main thing for me is like SWAT teams and helicopters guns with guns like 20 or 30 armed police showing up at a lab mm -hmm. where Essentially, it's a shoebox worth of steroids exists. Yeah. Um, like a small medical locker exists mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. And it's a few dorks inside the building. Yeah. This is the most American exceptionalism thing ever where they're like, we're sending the SWAT team. They're doing they're doing drugs in baseball. Yeah, yeah. They're doing, like, they brought people to Congress. So they put people in jail over this. Yeah, yeah. Are you losing your mind? Yeah. You're talking about grown men and women mm -hmm. playing professional sports where everybody's on gear and now you're just angry because you were watching it on TV and you didn't know what was happening. The I think that probably brings us on to Jeff the Rat Nowinski. So his middle name actually isn't the Rat, but... Uh, it is round here. <laughs> you, you might know Jeff Nowinski. You might be like, I know that name. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Nowinski went working as a consultant basically for the UFC uh, worked for WADA for a period of time I believe uh, they called him the golden snitch in the UFC as a an affectionate name uh, I don't think that's a nice nickname to be honest I wouldn't like to call the golden snitch <laughs> but you will call him the rat the rat Nowinski. Uh so basically he's also in this documentary and they're going through interviewing with different stages and they 
this point is brought up and there's like there was a helicopter with an armed fucking policeman in it and there's like 20 or 30 armed guards showing a policeman arresting Victor Conte with guns assault rifles holstered guns and stuff yeah and they're like basically to pose the question to Jeff they're like what the fuck was going on there why did you show up to a, a laboratory with someone who you didn't believe to be dangerous had guns yeah. you know and he was kind of defending it he's like yeah they had guns but you know we didn't know what was going to happen he's like that's what we did we were accountants with guns because that was the propaganda the ad so that's the thing he freeze. was an IRS agent who basically went out on his own to make this case mm-hmm what? Do you know FDA agents in America carry guns because they're federal agents or they can No way. Yeah, they can carry guns, yeah. That is a joke. Yep. Um, but anyway, the fact that he went off on his own and he was like, so firstly to get the job, he was like, saw an ad for an accountant with a gun. Yeah. And he was like, that's what I want to be. Yeah. That should tell you all you need to know here. But he basically went rooting through their bins for a few months um, started trying to make the case for this and then ran this thing where they, they brought up 42 different federal charges. Mm-hmm. He basically walked into a courthouse, turned around and came back with two. Yeah, pretty much. Like, they, a, what they call it was the slap on the wrist that was heard around the world. So they're talking to his second legal team and they didn't say what happened with the first one, but Victor Conte's second legal team was saying that the lame, not sorry, the technical term they used for the amount of drugs he had was teeny, <laughs> the teeniest amount. So there's like, you see photos and it's literally... Literally, like I'm using the word literally in the correct context, literally like four shoe boxes. Yeah. Some of them were filled with random pills and drugs. Like, yeah. Basically, what he done for was money laundering and the provision of illegal substances to athletes. Uh, the cream, or sorry, the, the clear, wasn't even a legal substance because yeah. it wasn't a registered drug. It didn't fall under anything, I believe, at the time. Uh, and... The only reason they were able to catch anyone or do anything meaningful with this doping stuff is because Jeff Nowinski was going through, sorry, Jeff Nowinski was going through the bins for months and months and photocopying all his mail and couldn't find anything. And it was in one of the coaches, Marion Jones's coach, yes, sent in a vial of the clear, another rat. No, so this is a really interesting thing. Right. Jeff, Jeff Nowinski is working for the IRS at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, sorry. I thought the coach was Inland sorry. Revenue Service. Yeah, Inland Revenue. Why would a coach of a US track and field athlete hmm. send that to Jeff Nowinski? Uh, that's just a bargaining chip or a payoff for something else that's going on. Mm-hmm. So I assume this is in my brain. My opinions are my own. Mm-hmm. This is with the assumption that, uh, do you remember the coach's name? Gregory, Greg Graham. No, it's Greg something. something. Go on, any. I assume the coach was brought in under IRS charges and Jeff was like, oh, wait, I know that name. I'm going to go and talk to him. And he'd be like, yeah, here's the thing. You don't go for to jail for or, not paying your taxes or whatever. He could have threatened them too, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so that's obviously is a bit of conspiracy theory stuff. But uh, yeah, so the reason Jeff was able to get pretty much anything in that regards was that that vial was sent in mm-hmm. the lab. Now, in fairness, uh, quite interesting. They talked to one of the lab analysts uh, who kind of back engineered the the clear uh, in the lab, which is quite interesting. You know, there's someone who's just going to do an interesting job. That'd be pretty cool. That's And he was like, I don't know what it is. But it's definitely something. Yeah, so they had to go back and basically get the fingerprint, as he called yeah. it. And, uh, you know, it's one really interesting thing. And this is also on the Gregory Trinkaf documentary, Icarus, which is a great documentary. Yeah, that's a great documentary. That's one of my favorite, if not my favorite documentaries yeah. of all time. Incredibly well filmed, shot, yeah. very likable characters, unlike this documentary. Yeah. But they go through it and Gregory did the same thing that Victor did and was like, I just took the drugs and did the test yeah. to see what was going <laughs> so on. Funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> he just do tests on himself every day as he kept taking it. Mm-hmm. Um, as we bring up Gregory Ruchenkov and as we talk about this being like massively blown out of the water, the United States federal government have just passed an act called the Gregory Ruchenkov Act or something along those lines. It's, it's pretty much, yeah. Which is a fine of up to $1 million and a jail term of up to 10 years for any person who is seen to help out with people taking drugs provide drugs or there's so oh help pass drug tests to any competition where an american athlete takes play takes part 
any competition where an American company sponsors it Mm -hmm. or any competition that takes place in the States. Yeah, which is an outrageous oversight or overreach of... What are you talking... Like, that is absolute lunacy. There's someone had a massive hard on when they were writing that bill. This is the classic thing of, yeah, America, like world police, you know? Yeah, yeah. What was that movie? Was Team America World Team Police. Team America World Durka, Police. Durka, Durka, Jihad, Durka, Durka. That is, that's the most American thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Like, imagine if there's an in-house powerlifting meet here in Ireland, south of Ireland, down in Cork. There's an American citizen taking part in that. Mm-hmm. And some random coach from Galway has come down with his athlete and he gave the athlete D-ball beforehand. He's liable for a $1 million fine and 10 years in federal prison. Mm-hmm. The, so obviously he would be able to get that person, but the the theory is that they could do stuff like that. If so they, they could if that person travelled to the States or was in a country where extradition to the States is... A thing. A thing. That's crazy. Yeah, and this what? this kind of stuff definitely preceded us. The Icarus and the Gregory Trinkoff thing is, uh, is all part of that, you know. And it's yeah. just, well, one of the reasons... That drugs essentially are the way they are now, performance enhancing drugs. And a lot of people in the industry make the argument that we'd have much safer performance enhancing drugs by now. Uh, research basically stopped in the, I think it was mid 70s. Uh, basically, that was pretty much the end of performance enhancing drug research or anabolic steroids. Uh, and one of the big things, the irony of the whole situation is that one of the big things with performance enhancing drugs and the anti doping side of things is that it's unsafe for athletes. Uh, but the irony is if uh, research hadn't stopped, they'd be much, much safer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's uh, it's a kind of a quirky situation in that regard. Absolutely. Because that is the whole thing around, uh, like, the major silver bullets or the heart of doping in sports is kids being doped mm-hmm. when they have no choice. If that was safer, that's a much lower argument. Yeah. You know, like, if it was just, like, taking a zinc supplement, mm-hmm. that's a much lower argument. That's a, like... The major danger is gone now. Mm-hmm. There's still a danger, but it mostly is gone. Um, and that is because of people like the rat. Nowinski. Nowinski. So probably one of the biggest things running through the whole show that you mightn't pay much attention to, uh, and it comes up a few times, and it's something that reflects a bit more on today's day and age, and I think this kind of ties in with the Liver King situation, is that... Victor Conte made a fuck ton of money, a, reportedly up to about 80 million, supposedly, uh, dollars on selling his supplements. Uh, the company was called Snack, S-N-A-C. Uh, ZMA was basically his thing originally. And the idea is here is that he was using these athletes, like Barry Bonds was wearing his ZMA hat, Tim Montgomery, Marion Jones were all wearing or affiliated with these supplements. And people didn't know that drug use was widely used in elite yeah. athletes and assumed and seeing them taking these supplements associated or allegedly or implication is that they associated their performance with these supplements and then that aided massively in sales, which it definitely did. Yeah, so that's where the actual crime occurs for me is like that man is knowingly selling a product, saying it has a certain outcome mm-hmm. and then knowing the outcomes are coming from performance enhancing drugs. That's the problem for me. Isn't it interesting that we've gone through a weird period of supplements? So obviously in that period of time, supplements were super popular. If you're making yeah. that much money selling supplements, there was clearly something to it. But for a long time, definitely when I started lifting weights and you kind of started lifting mm-hmm. a similar time. Supplements weren't really a thing. Um, they were the devil. Whey protein was acceptable. Creatine was like marginally acceptable. Creatine was on the little dodgy side. Yeah, there was. If you didn't really know, if you didn't do any pay any attention, yeah. you'd be like, creatine was like nearly a steroid, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which still kind of persists today, which is interesting. But yeah. uh, anything else, and I mean anything else, was just non-existent. No. There was like, I remember T Nation always had those really fucking quirky, weird supplements. Yeah. But um, outside of that, there wasn't a lot. Now we're in a stage where supplements, because I think people realize the value Mm -hmm. of specific supplements, you know. And there was this idea that you could get all the things you needed from just your diet. I think there's also a thing where you were working in a void of information back then. Fuck yeah. 
any supplement you took when that, it's self-imposed yeah like I any, didn't mind it dark cave but you couldn't get that information take us two planks as somebody who was like trawling for that information you just couldn't get it right? you actually just couldn't no so. um, you get like your I had no money for it either third level biology explanation for what zinc did mm-hmm no notion of what type of zinc, how much zinc you take, when you take the zinc, if you should take it all the time, if you should just take it sometime. Like even down to things like loading and plateauing with creatine, what you should do, what you shouldn't do. That information didn't exist. Yeah. Like it just did not exist. Like even when you're, we're in university, you'd be in the library looking for the answers to those questions. But you couldn't even get them. No. People didn't manufacture them. People didn't sell them. Uh, let alone the facts that when we started training, high speed internet wasn't a no. very wasn't no. Your internet used to make the like literally when I started <laughs> lifting weights. I think it was fourteen or fifteen. It was still dial up, hundred percent. And a lot of there's young fellas listening to this and gals probably who were like, "What the fuck are you talking?" Yeah. Lots of people listening to this who know exactly what we're talking yeah. about, but you couldn't get the information. Most scientific journals were inaccessible to general public. Absolutely, means. you had to be going on your university computer or something similar like that. Yeah. You couldn't buy them. You couldn't get them. If you shipped them in from America, you'd pay mass amounts of customs. You could literally get whey and creatine. You could go yeah. to Holland and Barrett sometimes, but you wouldn't even know what. And the, you, what you'd would get you some get. like electrolytes. Yeah, you can get those. Yeah. Um but that's. I think the problem now is the pendulum has swung where we're in a massive surplus of information. Mm-hmm. And whereas before you might have gotten like a stack or a multivitamin from someone, mm-hmm. whereas now people are like super selective. It's obviously great. I definitely think people get lost in that kind of paralysis or analysis thing. Yeah. They have so many different voices in their head. They have so many different things going on where, oh, I know that these five things really help me with training. Mm-hmm. But now because I have five different things going on, I forget to order one or I run out of one and I, I don't get it again. Or maybe I can't get it again. Maybe I can't afford to buy it again. Mm-hmm. And people are really like hyper focused on this exact thing. Yeah, it's um, it's re- very reminiscent. So the thing with the Liver King, as I remember from last year, is that the implication was that his physique was built off of steroids. Sorry, that's not an implication. He was on steroids. But the implication was that his physique was built off these organ supplements that he was selling and this lifestyle that he was living and these supplements were part of that. And then everyone had this kind of argument for a while, but... Um, you know, I'd forgive people back in the early 2000s. I really, I'd really be super empathetic and people being like, oh yeah, how yeah. the fuck could you know? Like yeah. you're saying, we didn't even know if, like what the story of creatine was for a period of time unless you were super like actually paying attention to stuff. So there's no way that you could have known elite sport back in, 19, in the mid 90s. No way. And so if you see someone selling something, a supplement, whatever it is, you'd be like, fuck. But... Uh, us on a random tangent the liver king should have been very obvious to most people yes uh, but that's by and by to, to be honest I think there's no excuse for that having not been obvious to people now yeah but but but, but. that still makes him yeah. wrong I suppose in some mm-hmm. ways absolutely and I suppose the big thing with liver king was that he denied it multiple times yeah whereas for these athletes they weren't saying anything or unless pressed you know and then yeah. they so most of them didn't even fail any drug tests or any fail any drug tests by state bodies, I yeah. suppose, or the relevant bodies. Um, this, all that being said, I think this documentary is well worth watching. Yeah. It's well worth, to be honest, it's a kind of straight to TV version of Icarus. Like that's the kind of level of quality versus Icarus. I Icarus no, is phenomenal. Nobody came across likable in this documentary. Victor Conte didn't come across very likable. There's a thrower who's having yes he's he there's a massive cake that says gold for soul yeah or soul for gold on it mm-hmm. and he's just a massive big american guy he looks like desperate then and he's like just call me mr zinc he's and everyone's laughing everyone knows what the joke is yeah he's at a party in balco and he's like just call me mr zinc yeah that's he's that like hilarious him. yeah he's very likable he's the only likable person in the whole thing jeff deratnavinsky's not likable Tim Montgomery doesn't come across very likable. Jeez, those two people for me, yeah. Tim Montgomery and Jeff Nowitzki are just like... And Tim completely contradicting himself saying it yeah. ruined his life, but also with the best moment of his life and they can't take that away from him. Uh, Victor Conte just came across as all sorts, but mostly unlikable. 
uh, and they were pretty much I like the lab guy the lab analyst yes. who had to back engineer the yeah. clear and see if you could find it because he was like and this is a, 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 a mass spectrometry <laughs> machine and we get the fingerprints you know, he was just like a nerd who was just really enjoying his job and yeah. was on a 10 seconds of Netflix documentary yeah. he was the most likable person on the thing absolutely yeah. Victor Conte's daughter came across very nice absolutely yeah very tough for her she was like four or five when this all happened yeah that's like it's good that she was included in it because I actually think it, it makes uh, Victor Conte be an awful lot more human mm-hmm. or it kind of gives people a look at his human side rather than him being this kind of evil genius who is doping people it actually showed that he was just a normal person um, but it is it's definitely worth a watch yeah the uh, pencil moustache by Victor Conte Here, years ago people need to look at someone mm-hmm. if you're like running a business or something and just be like look just get rid of it. Just are they still for sale? Are his supplements still snack? So I'd love to know about the eighty million and how accurate ZMA that was. ZMA is still for sale. ZMA trademark is still for sale. Yes, uh, snacks supplements. I wonder. Surely they're not. Surely he just sold the name for ZMA to someone. It looks like it's still going. Pre-workout performance sixty-one dollars. Uh, snack Systems, Snack Nutrition. Looks oh like yeah. It's Snack System founder and CEO, Victor Conte. Yeah, there we go. Fuck yeah, brother. Ooh. Is, uh, oh, nutrition and gear. Meh. <laughs> uh, we should get some snack t-shirts. That's not. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this longer form content because you did seem to enjoy it in the Korea one and this felt like a uh, a good opportunity to, yeah. to talk about it because there was a lot to get into. Oh, yeah, and this isn't something we could have just covered in 15 minutes. Yeah, we would have missed out a lot on the new ones. One thing that would be massively helpful is if there's other documentaries like this that me and Owen mightn't have seen or if they're on YouTube or some random place um, that you think would be worth a watch, mm-hmm. we'd love to watch them. Yeah, I don't wear watches, but I'll have a look. Yeah. If you do want to take a lab-tested supplement with scientific backing that we know is effective for your sleep, it contains some of the most important micronutrients in your sleep. No performance-enhancing drugs, unfortunately, are included in that. But it will help you recover and get better sleep and get better quality sessions and hopefully live a little bit of a better life. Get Seek Asleep at SeekAStrength.com. No clear for sale, no AP testosterone cream, no EPO, no HGH. What you have to do is go on the website and buy every product, put them all in your basket, pay for them, and then it just comes in the post. Yeah, just buy the whole the whole thing. <laughs> uh, I just do want to say as well that a, in a couple of weeks, the supplement won't be available for a period of time for people who are not on subscription. So you can get on subscription for a slight discount. Uh, if you're not on subscription, towards the end of September, it will be out for off for general sale for a couple of weeks. So if you have been buying it on that, I would recommend you sign up for your subscription because there will be a period of out of stock for non-subscription sales. And for everybody who's on subscription, there there be no disruption at all to your service. Yep. And the will also be a new supplement next year. On the opposite of Seek Asleep. We'll keep that one. <laughs> Seek out. Woo! <laughs> Seek amphetamines. <laughs> Thanks for watching.